When I was 16, I had spent my entire savings, which was 300 euros at the time, just on buying a single stock. I had a foolproof investment plan. The idea was just to buy the stock just before the dividend date, wait until the prices ramped up a little bit before their earnings report, and then hopefully gather some dividends and then sell the stock with some profit. Genius idea. Easy peasy. And if it sounds like an incredibly dumb decision, then yes, you'd be right. And Sadly, this wasn't the dumbest financial decision that I've ever made. However, through sheer dumb luck, I somehow managed to earn about 20 euros, on, so on a total amount of 300 euros after taxes. That isn't too bad. After that moment, around 2009, I was completely hooked on investing. However, it took me a couple of years before I started investing for real basically when I had some money. And that time came around the time I was in college and I had some money saved up from my summer jobs. The thing is though, if you are start investing or start investing in stocks, especially in the short term, and even if you are actively trading, without any leverage or margin, you aren't going to see really high returns over a short period of time. So naturally I was looking for more. I needed my fix. And that's when I discovered CFDs. Contracts for difference. In a nutshell, this means buying a contract with some underlying value, usually with a boatload of leverage. And you can either guess that the price will go up, you can go long, or you can guess that the price will go down. So you go short. To give an idea of how badly this resembles gambling, the practice of selling those types of CFDs is no longer allowed in Belgium because it's considered gambling and the platform that I used as a result no longer operates here so you can't even make an account on there anymore as a Belgian consumer. So you can imagine exactly how well this went. I started off with a thousand euros and somehow managed to be able to trade my way up to eight thousand euros. So I eight folded my money in couple weeks maybe at most. And back then I was a pretty broke college student so having 8,000 euros at your disposal at that age is a complete power trip. I felt like a trading god and I had Wall Street all figured out. And of course everything came downhill from there. I believe it took just a couple days before I was completely cleared out. As a result of that stunt I lost about 50% of my total savings. Savings for which I had worked an entire summer. However, it taught me some very valuable lessons about investing, which I'll get to in a minute. Then later, when I entered the workforce, I started investing for real. I read books, I followed the news on the companies that I invested in, I read company statements, the whole shebang. I did this for a couple of years and then I came to the conclusion that this was a complete waste of time. I invested in companies which stock price would surely rise due to a number of factors that I researched. Then some external factor happened which took all my research out to the desert, then set it on fire and burned it for good measure. And I lost money. However, I also had some successes that came out of nowhere. There were also times that I sold a stock too early because I thought the stock was overvalued and somehow it kept on climbing. Uh, the chip maker AMD springs to mind in th around 2018 and the same goes for Tesla. All of this work and guessing and in the end I would have had a better return had I just sold everything and invested it into a broad market exchange traded fund or ETF. This realization along with the fact that about 80 or 90% depending on the source you look at of actively managed funds don't even succeed in outperforming the general market really made me question my decision on what the hell I was doing. So that's when I decided to sell everything, save one stock and invest it into a broad market ETF. So why do I still have one specific stock in my portfolio? Well, that's a story for another time, but basically I still like having a small part of my portfolio in individual stocks mostly for the fun factor. However, I made a decision for myself that I won't invest more than 10% of my total portfolio into individual stocks. So what are the lessons that I learned from all these mistakes? The first one is to never invest in the short term. Almost all of my gains that I made over the years are due to long-term investment. The second one is to never ever think you are ahead of the market. Even when you think you spotted an opportunity in the market, you 
can act on it if you think long term, think about point one, but if you think you are going to be able to outsmart the market in the short term, it's highly unlikely and you are going to come up short. There are people with way more time, way more money than you who are still not able to. So please do not try. Three, research is useful, but it isn't the holy grail. It would be really nice if you could just research something and then predict what is going to be to happen 100% of the time, but there is always a factor of luck involved. Four, diversifying is key. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Five, take more risk when you are younger and less when you are older. Especially this last point I really want to further clarify. Even though I have left behind my past of trying to actively trade CFDs or stocks or any other asset, I am still investing a large part of my portfolio into riskier assets. If you have been following the channel, then you know that I'm talking about cryptocurrencies, which as of right now is about one third of my total liquid asset portfolio. Objectively, this is way too much. However, my reasoning is this. When you are younger, you have more time to recover from potential financial setbacks, so you can also take on more risk as a result. And again, within reason, of course, I don't mean you should invest 90% of your total portfolio into cryptocurrencies, that would be complete insane. What I am saying is that even if you somehow have some financial setbacks early in life, it's easier to recover from them. So it makes sense to take on more risk then. If I look back at myself, yes, I lost a couple thousand trying to trade CFDs. Yes, I lost a bit of money trying to trade stocks. And yes, I also lost money trying to get a business off the ground, which failed. That's a story for another time. But the thing is, even though I did all of that, I am by no means worse off financially today. I firmly believe that we can learn more from our failures than from our successes, which is also the reason why I wanted to make this video. However, I'm curious to hear from you guys. What's the worst financial decision that you've made over the years? So maybe we can all learn from it as well. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to learn more about which ETF to buy and which one I'm personally buying, then I highly suggest you subscribe if you aren't already. And it is going to come out really, really soon. I know my upload schedule has been quite rocky as of late, which is mostly due to positive circumstances. Um, and it's going to get impacted a lot more as well in the next couple months. So I can't say exactly when I will upload what. Uh, but the next video is also almost done, so it won't take that long to finish. So you won't have to wait that long for that video. After that, I do hope on uploading more regularly. Um, but uh, as I said, it will depend a little bit on how much free time I have to make and edit and upload these types of videos. So be patient, uh, but you won't have to be patient for long for the next video. That's what I wanted to say. So <laughs> then I uh, hope to see you next time. Bye.